It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brianna Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview UT Martin's head rifling coach, MJ Val. How are you doing today? Fantastic, Brandon. Thanks for inviting me. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get into college coaching and rifling? Well, actually, it was a little bit by accident. I uh, uh, had retired from the military and, and had done some, some instruction, uh, shooting instruction on the side with a, a company. Um, but it just so happens that my husband and I retired uh, about 80, 80 miles east of the university where my former coach was looking to um, find a new coach for the team because he'd been doing it for 30 plus years. And uh, he just ha so happened to contact me. And so here I am. What was your college playing time like at UT Martin? Oh, it was fa fantastic. I was here from uh, 85 to 88. Um, coach uh, Bob Beard was our coach, a fantastic gentleman, um, good teammates, um, good experience. UT Martin's also uh, the campus itself and the, the academic side is also a fantastic place. What was it like, obviously, being a part of the 86 golf, golf championship team? Very exciting. Um, it, I don't, it was just exciting. And it was a good, good team that year. Um, I don't know how to put it all into words, but um, it, it was good. How is it like obviously coming out of obviously serving for our United States Army for 20 years going into college coaching? Um, a little different. Of course, you know, in the Army, we train individuals and train teams, and uh, actually, I was in logistics, so uh, do a lot of logistics. Uh, transitioning to the college-age kids, um, you still have the same techniques of training individuals and coaching and mentoring, uh, but it's a little... It's a little different. <laughs> it's, it's different than talking to soldiers. So, and I, we have two grown children of our own, so uh, that helped a little. Of course, how was it like going back to your alma mater to become the head coach there? Terrific. Terrific feeling. Um, coach Beard uh, also uh, is retired and maintains here in town in Martin. And so I could go to him and, and uh, ask questions and get his advice. And, and uh, that's very helpful to me. So, How is it like in 2020, obviously taking four at-large bids into obviously the NCAA tournament? Well, we actually um, only got one of those individuals, and that was an air rifle, uh, and that was Caitlin Cornick, who is a nurse now. She's graduated. Um, that was very exciting, and she had worked very, very hard uh, to get that spot, and I wasn't at all surprised that, that she earned it, but the downside of that was, of course, just as we were leaving to go to Lexington, Kentucky to shoot in the championship, uh, the COVID restrictions hit. And the championship was canceled uh, the night prior to, to the shooting kicking off. So that was, that was a little disappointing. But, you know, the, the gold star in that is that uh, she earned that berth uh, to go to the championship. And so that was, that was very good for her. And I was very proud of her. What was it like having the conference championship held at UT Martin's campus in 2018 and 19 season? It was good. Uh, it was great. It was very busy. 
that's the first time we had uh, hosted the OVC championship in several years. Uh, we made the transition from paper targets to electronic targets. Uh, and so we had uh, the other three teams in here. Uh, our athletic department supported the t our team and the, as the host and the visiting teams just tremendously uh, with all kinds of logistic support that we needed and made it a huge success. Of course, having the conference championship in your home area, what was it like, obviously, having that home field advantage of obviously knowing where things are and that kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I th you know, each school that hosts has the home team advantage, but but still, um, the other teams had, uh, through the season, had shot on the range, so they had some familiarity with it. Uh, but yeah, it's always nice to, to shoot on your own range. What's this typical compete? game day look like for UT Martin's rifling program? Typical day. Uh, normally we're on the road. We don't shoot that many home matches. So uh, we're, we're um, visiting another university on their range. Um, normally uh, we arrive at the range at eight o'clock. Uh, go time is at nine o'clock when we, we start the, the match. So that gives them the student athletes. It gives them time to set their equipment up, get in their mental game uh, mindset that they need to be in um, and then to shoot the full match takes from oh it takes from nine o'clock till about 1 30 um, we shoot both small bore which is 22 and followed by air rifle and that's what uh, comprises a match of course what is it like obviously seeing as head coach and knowing obviously what you went through during your time at UT Martin to see what these athletes are going through at, during their time at UT Martin? Quite a lot of similarities. Um, uh, equipment is somewhat different. Uh, it's, it's much more modernized than when I was shooting. Um, but on a whole, it, it's, I can feel what they're going through. I can feel the frustration of a, of a less than perfect shot. Uh, I can feel the frustration of, you know, um, handling the nerves. Um, so it's, uh, I don't think they realize it, but I sit behind the firing line and I'm sh shooting nearly every shot along with them. So um, it's quite, kind of what it feels like. Who are some of the teams that you face in our conference? Murray State uh, in Murray, Kentucky. Moorhead State uh, up above Lexington in, in Moorhead, Kentucky. Um, and we've also uh, had uh, Jacksonville State University from down in Alabama. So the, our conference is fairly small, but we also shoot with other NCAA Division I teams. We aren't just limited to uh, teams within our conference. Was it like obviously competing against those teams in your conference like Murray State? Oh, they're stiff competition. Um, they got a terrific coach, great team. Uh, same thing with Moorhead. Great comp great competition there. Uh, super, super athletes and uh, and head coach there. So it's it's always enjoyable to go to their schools. And the coach down at Jacksonville State always uh, it's always enjoyable to to go there also. What's it like? Obviously, as you said, you don't just compete with your conference, but you compete with other teams. What's it like? Obviously, competing with those other teams like Army, Navy, West Point, and stuff like that. Oh, it's always uh, it's always good. Um, mostly, we stay a little more towards the southeast, uh, simply because of logistics of travel uh, and the, the cost of travel and etc. So we. Uh, Sometimes shoot with Ole Miss, uh, North Georgia, uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham, um, and different ones. And so oft oftentimes um, the coach at Murray State will host us and another team because he has a, a much larger range than I do. And, and we'll coordinate for uh, UT Martin, say, to get to shoot against maybe Ole Miss up at Murray. Um, and reasons for that is it helps out the traveling team, which is Ole Miss. They get to shoot against Murray on one day, say Saturday, and then we come up on Sunday. And uh, so that gets them two matches in on one traveling weekend. So we do a lot of that. 
What's it like, obviously, competing against Ole Miss in the SEC? Well, we don't. They're in a different conference than us. So, I mean, we may have matches during the year, but we don't compete in your championship. What's it like competing against an SEC team like Ole Miss? They're very good. It's, uh, it's challenging. Um, great coach. Uh, enjoy uh, getting to, to see uh, her and catch up with her. Um, but it's good for our team. You know, stiff competition makes our kids work a little harder. What does the recruitment process look like for prospective student athletes looking to go into college right for only? That's, it's actually pretty easy on me that as the coach. Um, I don't have to do a lot of recruiting trips. Uh, I get a, quite a number of emails um, throughout the year. Uh, from high school shooters asking about my program here or our program and, uh, you know, giving me some updates on their scores and what they want to study at school and things like that. So we'll start out with uh, emails um, and then perhaps we'll have a Zoom meeting. Um, and I always encourage the student athlete to come, come visit the campus uh, on the academic um, visits so that they can come see the campus also uh, before we get down to any specific talks, because I would prefer that they they are happy with the school and, and what the campus looks like and what it offers on the academic side of the house. And uh, that gives me a chance to, to meet the student, the high school student athlete and their parent uh, or parents. Um, and then they keep me updated on their progress. Um, how they're shooting, the matches that they're shooting, what they're shooting. And uh, then I narrow down the field of uh, these prospects that I'm talking to and give offers to a few. Of course, what is it like, obviously, having them come on the official visit and obviously tour and see, obviously, what the UT Martin program is about? Uh, typically, um, they sign up for the campus tour ahead of time, and they'll come in and that's normally an all day process uh, where they're looking at the campus and normally, well, not all day, most of the day. Anyway, I will coordinate with them to meet at the range um, once they've done their campus visit and then they come over to the range and we, I show them how we operate and what equipment we have. And then we, we sit and talk. Um, so that's basically what the visit's like. What is it like to see those prospective student athletes, obviously, see how much you have on the range and obviously make sure they feel at home? Um, well, I just, I talk straight to them. I, I tell them how we operate and what's expected and that their academics come first, although I want them to be the best they can be as a shooter um, and for the team to be the best it can be. But um, the, the first priority is, is academics. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you've helped build upon, obviously, as an alumni and now as a coach? Well, um, I try to set the example of, you know, doing the right thing. Before we travel, I talk to the team and say, you know, we, we have a dress code. It's not super strict, but uh, we uh, need to look professional and act professional uh, because they're representing the school, the team, you know, and themselves. And uh that's, that has carried over quite well, and I got that from Coach Beard, honestly. Um, that's about it. What advice would you give prospective student athletes looking to go into college rifling? To um, actively work uh, in their club or their high school team. Don't wait till the last minute to reach out uh, to the division one college coaches, um, as many of them do, but don't, don't wait till the last minute, you know, start, I've got a junior in high school, uh, that I've already emailed with, or she emailed me first. And so I'm monitoring her progress. She sends me updates. So, you know, I tell the student athlete to the pr prospective student athlete to look into the colleges that offer rifle but also look at the specific academics that the university um, offers. It's those two things have to be in alignment. You know, if, if you don't want to study um, or if you want to study a particular thing, subject, 
then pick out those rifle colleges that have that subject. Because uh, academics is important. That's why they're here. Of course, what advice would your future college coaches looking to go into college rifling? Uh, future coaches. I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer that. Um, you know, it's something that you've got to want to do, that you, you want to uh, help these young people, along, not just in coaching them in rifle, but, in, you know, life lessons and, and uh, things of that nature so that they grow and mature while they're here. And it's, it's quite different to see them when they come in as freshmen and when they leave as a senior. There's quite a transition there. Uh, it's good to watch. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the US UT Martin Rifling Program at? Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, I did not pull it up. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook, hmm, I can't remember off the top of my head. And you know, I don't have it laying in front of me. Can I get that back to you? Yes. Okay. Thank you again, Coach MJ Val, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I appreciate it. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, UT. Thank you again, MJ Val, for your interview, and best of luck in your future at UT Martin. Thanks, Brandon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.